Seven months ago, I bought this 135i BMW and this is what it looked like and sounded like back then. And this is what it sounds like now. Yeah, a little bit of a difference, I would say. This is my 2009 BMW 135i. Biggest upgrades completed. It has an 8HP 45, still rear wheel drive. Has an 0-3 single turbo kit. Turbo is a 6466. Ford facing manifold, all the bells and whistles, supporting mods. It's been a hell of a journey, but uh, I think the result is pretty good. We did end up filming the entire build over the past few months. So if you'd like to see it or Go watch it again or watch it for the first time we'll be able to uh leave the thing somewhere anyways you'll you'll find it on the channel the goal was to build a 700 horsepower n54 one series for under about ten thousand dollars us and again not canadian pesos proper ten thousand american dollars yeah I guess it's uh, time to tell if we've stayed within budget or if I failed miserably. I tried very hard not to add up the numbers to see how much I had spent on it, but uh, we'll begin. Now, keep in mind, I'll give you all the numbers in Canadian dollars and we'll give you a bit of a breakdown. I think we'll put it on the screen just so we can tally it. It'll be in Canadian pesos and eventually we'll convert it and see how we stacked up to our budget goal. We're going to start with vehicle purchase price because you're obviously going to need a vehicle to build. Vehicle purchase price, $5,000. Now that being said, I got a bit of a breakdown. I did end up getting VIV 17T turbos. I got uh, charge pipe, blow valves, the factory dual cool in intakes, and there was a couple other small little things. After selling that, the vehicle purchase price was $2,300 Canadian. Believe it or not, a 2009 135i full M Sport, everything with the big Brembos, 2300 bucks. So we're off to a good start, but uh, looking at these numbers, it uh, it gets a little bit rough. O3 single turbo kit. So this big old spoolie boy here. Now, for obvious reasons, I needed to get all the trimmings. So it's the 6466 with the, I believe it's the billet wheel and the triple ceramic ball bearing or dual ceramic ball bearing. Anyways, the turbo kit, shipped, landed, duty brokerage, all the fun stuff, $4,315.06. So I did get a bit lucky because ON3 ended up having this on sale. I think they were hawking them off or 50% off or clearance or whatever. So it ended up working. Next up, most of you will not believe it, but the 8HP45 rear wheel drive with the oil cooler I didn't use, the F22, so out of a two series shifter and a donated torque converter came to $200. Yes, that's right. I happen to score the 8HP45, including shifter and other stuff for 200 bucks. Buddy of mine sold it. I had no idea it was gonna fit sat in the corner of the garage and ironically i think that's what kind of the snowball effect happened and this is the result but yeah 200 bucks great hey big dollar ticket item can formance controller kit now that will include the controller the diy harness the connectors essentially everything that you needed to do that was one thousand seven hundred forty nine dollars and seventy five cents yeah, a bit of a sting but that's okay the transmission adapter, so now we're going from the 6HP to the 8HP transmission. I believe it's 10 or 11 mil for the 6HP to adapt the factory cooler, which we decided to go, or that was the best course of action, to the 17 mil ports or 18, anyways, whatever, I'm not good with numbers. Uh, on the 8HP, that adapter shipped, landed, everything, $95.34. Replacement N54 engine. So this, bab that's freaking hot. This bad boy here, the factory engine, if you've watched the previous videos, it ended up eating a few steel bits, chomped on them good, destroyed the front turbo and put tons of metal throughout. Couldn't trust that motor and I didn't feel like rebuilding it in the middle of winter. So we ditched that idea. Replacement engine. Now uh, it did have a bit of a weepy valve seal. So the 
wrecker that sold it to us did give us some money back, but shipped and landed $1,415.64. Not bad, hey? Not bad. Now bear in mind, we did have to refresh and reseal the engine, so that will come uh, shortly here. BMS, we had a miscellaneous order. Now I can't remember exactly what that was. I think it was diff brace and other small items, including the filter. $121.03, okay, not bad. For the seals and whatnot from FCP Euro, $299.31, so far so good. Rock Auto, miscellaneous orders, because some things you can get from other places for cheaper and it's the same part, $591.69. Now for the Rock Auto, that'll end up being the miscellaneous items that I didn't get at FCP. So essentially, we refresh the majority of it. A handful of the items would be like oil filter housing, gaskets, seals. FCP was the only place to get the O-rings for the oil cooler and other items like exhaust gaskets and so forth. All the smaller things. 335 diesel tank, yeah, that nice bit of bit of plastic there. It accounts for uh, all of those items. Now, bigger, bigger items. PR coils, forward-facing manifold. We have the dock race forward-facing charge pipe. We have the tile blow-off valve. We have the fuel rail for the port. We have the injectors and the controller came to a whopping 1700 Canadian dollars. Now I rounded up, it was like 16.99 and change, but that works. Walbro 450, including the fittings and everything needed. So as you probably saw in the other video, if you stuck around for a while, we decided to modify the factory bucket on the cheap. Walbro 450 with fittings, $274.63. Not bad. 8HP45 transmission pen, since the factory one had a crack in it and it has the integrated filter. And oh yeah, by the way, the transmission and everything associated only had 41,000 kilometers. Yeah, 200 bucks is pretty good. 8HP45 pen, filter, bolts, fluid, 227.68. Now the exhaust, I didn't want to use the factory exhaust because we wanted to upgrade with a single turbo. Generally, you'll have a three inch all the way back so it doesn't end up splitting into two. I went with a used wrist racing cap back, which is three inch to a full size muffler. 300 bucks used, pretty good. Miscellaneous fluids, 108.36. So that'll end up being engine cool and power steering fluid and whatever else that I didn't need, distilled water, small things. Miscellaneous hose and fittings. So for example, the blue silicone hoses and whatnot for the catch can, hoses for the blow off valve, for the Mac valve and so forth. That is $73.85. Catch cans high and low. I remembered these and they didn't really stick out anywhere. So the low side, which is a Mishimoto knockoff, high side, which is a BMS maybe knockoff, I can't remember, $74.48. Getting near the bottom of the list, the 18 inch work wheels. They're definitely used, but they're in excellent shape that I got off a buddy of mine. They did include tires. Now, these aren't necessary to make the 700 horsepower, but it looks pretty damn good. Those were 1,000 bucks. Now that is everything in a nutshell. Now bear in mind that there are many used parts that I can sell. I have spare high pressure fuel pumps. I have all the miscellaneous items. Generally I've been donating them to friends, but I can sell the bigger ticket items and I may get 500 to $1,000 back. But at the end of it, the factory engine. Now this amount won't account for the factory engine, but I have somebody committed to buying the factory engine for $3,500 and I will be into it for about 500 in gaskets, rod bearings, and so forth. So I will refresh it, and I will be selling it for 3,500, so I put about a $3,000 price tag ticket on that, and uh, should work out pretty good. Now, bear in mind, this does not account for labor. I am that glutton for punishment where I can do it myself, but uh, yeah, a lot of you can't, in, I do recommend just at least try it and watch our videos and if it helps give you a little bit of motivation great because that's how i started totaling everything comes to thirteen thousand eight hundred and forty six dollars and eighty two cents that's canadian usd total ten thousand one hundred and twenty seven dollars and fifty seven cents i missed it by 127 bucks those wheels definitely pushed it over budget, but uh, it's worth it. I'm not gonna fudge numbers to make it look like we scored and made it work, but you know what? At the end of the day, to have a car like this for just over 10,000 US, I'm okay with that. 
Once I do sell the engine, it will be $11,846.82, which converted to US Freedom Funds, $8,690.87. So did we meet the budget? No, not quite, not currently. Will we hit the budget when I decide to find some free time and refresh an engine and sell it to a buddy? Yes, we will. And again, doesn't account for labor. Labor can end up being a small fortune on its own, but if you're able to do this and you have some time and you wanna watch YouTube videos and learn how to do it yourself, by all means, this is something that I'm sure a lot of people could slowly, uh, slowly work towards. What do you guys think? Could I have saved some money elsewhere or somewhere? Could I have done things different? Would you have changed anything? I think this is a pretty good stepping stone for my, or at least what I consider the ultimate and 54 build, especially being one series. And we will eventually be on the lie detector to bring that horsepower number to you. Well, that's all for now. We will uh, include a couple of videos of me driving around, pinning it a little bit, and uh, stay tuned as always. Feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.